Welcome to the Social Media Church Podcast. I am joined by my past co-host, good friend, Lakers fan, unfortunately, and lots of other hats that he wears and how does I could give him. Jay Cranda, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks, Neil. So glad to to be on. I'm I'm excited to always jump on uh, and co-host with you. I miss I miss those days. Those feel like forever ago. Yeah. Well, so first question, why'd you quit? Why'd you quit on on us here on the podcast? I mean, it went down uh, after Jay just quit. I don't quit. think that's true. Uh, <laughs> I think it went up. I, went, I think it went up. You, we uh, miss you, Jay. We miss you. you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, I, I, miss, I miss you. I miss hanging out, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we still hang out, uh, just yeah. not as much. And this was a good excuse for us to hang out. But you also have uh, 17 kids and a full-time <laughs> job. And uh, you have three kids, to be clear. But uh, in LA, that's a lot of kids, I feel like. Or, or it, is a lot. It, it, uh, is, it is a lot of kids in California, for sure. Yes, yes. In in New York, if you have more than two kids, like oh, you yeah. get like like people are like, "What's wrong with you? Oh, like, I, do you I not know it's, how this it's works?" More extreme uh, in in New York, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But in Texas, if you don't have like four kids, you're like frowned upon. <laughs> and so we 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 have lived in multiple worlds uh, when it comes to kids, and uh, and it's fun. We I got to be a part of your son's first day of eighth grade yesterday. Uh, so that was fun watching. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we were. I was calling you, and I. Uh, we're starting, I don't understand here. I know, I know this is like an old person thing to say, but school starts earlier and earlier in the summer. And so yes. like I was scheduled the meeting with you and I was like, oh wait, that's my son's first day of school of eighth yeah. grade. I'm like, but it's like, we're mid August. Why are we starting school? Like Why? my brain just didn't register it. Yeah. I play in the pandemic. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know if it has anything to do with that, but we, Probably. so in New York, we don't start for two more weeks. Uh, oh, but- really? But we got friends in Atlanta that started like two weeks ago. Uh, so I, I'm so confused. <laughs> By the time people are listening to this, though, it's now, you know, a couple weeks past. Uh, and so we we do pre-record these. And Jay, I asked you to come on the podcast for a specific reason. Before we get into that reason, so that's just a little teaser. We got some we got some exciting news uh, to share on this podcast. But Jay, what? what's what's the state of jay cranda maybe maybe more specifically what's the state of saddleback online obviously i think a lot of people know you, saddleback has gone through a significant leadership change uh you know and i don't i don't know if you've been on since the leadership change uh took place but what's the what's the state of online ministry at, at saddleback in, in your role there yeah i mean i think anytime you know we had a our founding leader transition um um off um in a really great way and we found a new leader in you know, we, we go from a leader who's, you know, he's still very young. Yep. Pastor Rick was always very young in heart and the way he was, but now having a leader in his early forties, yep. um, a lot of changes. And so I think, um, I would tell anybody, I was always super interested in how the transition would go, especially with online ministry. You know, I, I think yep. we've talked, we've had, I mean, you, your own past has gone through a transition. Yeah, I I'd quit in the middle of a succession. I, and so you, you, you stuck it out, uh, but I love you, Ed Newton. Uh, but I, it, I did, I did not uh, make, make the transition with the senior pastor change, but it, it creates a new, a new vision and direction it and yeah. it's, it's inevitable. And so I'm, yeah, yeah I think have, we're curious. Yeah. You have to, uh, you have to re I mean, I, I would always say that, you know, this idea that I, I have a lot of vision and a lot of energy, but I sit under my leader. And so I have to figure out how do I realign and reevaluate everything we're doing. And so we've been in that season. And um, the cool thing was, is that Pastor Andy doubled down, tripled down on digital. Yeah. And so um, it's more of a, it's actually, it's like another degree of, of engagement and so forth. And so we've done a lot of things this past year of, we started a, I think it's about a year ago, a YouTube strategy where we create a custom worship service just for right. YouTube. And that's been a lot of fun. We've seen tons of growth, I think, for obvious reasons. I think nice. most people, we've moved away from live hosting and rebroadcast strategy to like just on demand YouTube. And we've, mm. we've grown like 30% yep. the last year. Um, Love that. Um, and, you know, there's reasons why we can do that because of our size and structure. Yeah. Uh, we're still doing it pretty lean. But, um, but yeah, like, and I think generally we're just, you know, I would say our online team is uh, involved in a lot more things our church is doing church wide. And yep. so we're trying to figure out, and I think we're still in that season of structurally, how do we 
figure it all out. A lot of one of the a lot of the cool stuff I love is a big part of our future. The next you know three to five years is expansion, and yep. you know, my team is more involved in doing some of the groundwork for that expansion. So like Saddleback yep. is exploring one of the ideas that we've I've been doing for a long time. I took this idea from Life Church like eight years ago, but we do meetups in out of state and yep. um one of the places saddleback is interested in going is boise idaho and um mm. in two weeks from now i'm doing a meetup in boise and i'm promoting it and i'm going to have a couple of our senior leaders with us and the idea is to meet people and see what god's doing and so just connecting our online community to future campus launches that's that's a lot of the exciting work we're doing right now and somehow using our data and our our engagement online Yep. People who are in online groups that are giving, that are taking classes, all that. Like, how do we, how do we use that as a first step to see what's going on? And so, um, that's all the fun stuff we're doing. So it's it's been a really fun ex- uh, season of ministry, and so a lot of a lot of work and a lot of fun. And and uh, and I'm glad I don't have to also host the social media church podcast in the midst of it. So. <laughs> You're glad to to not be doing this with me anymore? Is that what I just heard? I wish people that was a jab. Could, it, people could have seen Neil's face when I said that. Like, I mean, there there are literal tears uh, falling from my eyes right now uh, with with that jab. I one of the things that that you know, and Jay, we we've been friends for so long. Um, you know, you, you I had hair when we met. Uh, it's true. Actually, it's true. And. Uh, and and you had all one colored hair and now, oh, now, okay. you, you, now you've got the grays uh you still look you know i mean you went from like 14 to like 16 uh so you still have the ageless effect uh but but it uh you know but one of the things i think you and i both learned in ministry is is the internet doesn't ever turn off mm-hmm. and there can be there there you know for those of us you know and you and i jay have this wiring of we're very driven and it there's you know, you could work 120 hours a week, you know, if you choose to, because there's always more to be done and more people to reach in the internet is always working. It's not like you're building where people aren't going to come at two in the morning. Well, actually with online, people are going to come and engage with you at two in the morning. And so limits are such a challenging thing, especially in online ministry uh, from my perspective. And now I'm in my forties uh, and I appreciate limits a lot more than I did in my late twenties, early thirties, when you and I jumped into, you know, online ministry. And it's, uh, I, I appreciate that you actually find joy in not doing this podcast with me, uh, because it's part of your limits. And, uh, and I, I yeah. deeply, as much as I'm going to always give you a hard time about it, I deeply respect it and appreciate that about you. Um, it's uh it's been so fun to watch the journey of Saddleback and Saddleback Online as you you know I think you you at the beginning you know you had that 30 minute you know tracker and uh and time and and then you know as, as you pivoted to so many different technologies and platforms and now I I love what you're doing with YouTube and um and and really focusing on on where that is uh but Jay one of the things that I have pushed you on uh for a long time is writing the book on you're the guy who's been in online ministry longer than anyone else uh and you and i have talked you know probably for at least a year about how to write the book what to you know like how to where to publish it you know all all of those kind of things that come with uh writing a book uh and you've done it you've done it so at the time of this recording that's that's the big news big announcement is jay's book that you've been working on for years um is now available to to be read and I believe this is this is the most important resource that's ever been created for online ministry. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's and I and you gave me the privilege, Jay, of reading the book in advance and yep. and reviewing the book and uh, and I just I remember I read it on a on a plane plane ride uh, there and back. Uh, and I remember halfway through, I was like, this is the best thing ever. You know, I just was going nuts um, on it. And um, you were super encouraging. I was super grateful for those texts that you were sending me. I think you were sending it to me while you were on the plane. You were like, yeah, I think so. I think I'd gotten the Wi Fi. And I was like, and I was like, every chapter was like, this is even better. It's <laughs> even better. Uh, it, 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 and I think what I was telling you is, this is not, I think, I think people could perceive that this is a book for online pastors of how to build your online church. And, and I think what you wrote, Jay, is both a practical application to how to do ministry online, 
but yeah. but also a, a, a philosophical understanding of how every pastor ministry leader needs to understand the opportunities of the internet aligned to ministry. And that whether you have an online church campus or however you want to describe it or not, we all are using the internet or one way or another to accomplish our ministry goals. And that's what this book, I think, helps every ministry leader creative. How are we going to approach this thing of the internet? Uh, and how are we going to use it to, to accomplish our ministry goals? It's just, it's such a powerful book. So Jay, let's, I, I just kind of spilled the beans on the book itself, but let's talk through why, why did you write this book? What was your journey to begin the process of writing this book and what, what's it called? Yeah. So it's online church is not the answer. Um, and it's the subtitle is beyond just streaming to hybrid disciple making. Um, and really the, the heart is there is, you know, like you kind of alluded to, I've had the opportunity to, you know, really get a, like a doctorate in digital ministry as a church yes. leader. And I know, especially as somebody who came to faith at a small church where we didn't yes. have a lot of staff and now I'm at a big yeah. church, I know people don't have the time to think about all these things. And I've yep. been able to, um, I've been able to kind of, you know, kind of the exaggerated line of that everybody talks about, but I've been able to get my 10,000 hours of yes. doing this. Yes. And a lot of times but at this point, it's like a hundred thousand hours. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're you're on the, like, and, uh, and you, it you, you like went that. from masters to doctorate uh, yeah. in, the, in the last couple yeah. of years. Uh, and so like, I think a lot of, about this stuff and I've tried out a lot of ideas and had yes. some success and had stuff not work. And I really want to champion and I want to help the local church leader think about digital in a very productive and healthy way. And so yep. this is kind of like a manifesto of, to how I think I'm one of the first ministry books I ever read. Um, it was actually the first ministry book I ever read was the yeah. first two years of uh, youth ministry by Doug Fields. Yes. And I remember he wrote that book uh, like you're getting coffee with him. Yeah. And it was like, hey, we're just, you want to go into youth ministry? Here, here's yep. a book. It's like sitting across the table and I'm just talking to you about stuff. And I kind of wanted to write a book like that because I remember mm. reading that book when I was like 19. Yep. And I loved how it was written. I loved the concepts in it. I loved some of the practical ideas. And so I tried to write it like that, like, hey, and, and, and even the journey, I learned a lot through writing it and rewriting it. I think I started in 2020 and then I got like 30,000 words in and then COVID like just totally changed stuff. And I, yeah. I kind of scrapped a lot of the words. I actually changed some of it after talk. I talked to three to four publishers. I almost got yep. published by yep. a big publisher, one of the biggest. Yep. And they were very honest with me about my title and yep. some of the things. And I learned a lot and they were super gracious. We, I was at the last leg of maybe going with them and then they, they decided not to go with me. Yep. And, um, and, and that ended up, that gave me a lot of perspective of like, okay, like, of how books are sold and like the title, yes. like, okay. Cause my original title was thinking digitally as a church, as a pastor. And they were like, yep. so only pastors can read this. And, yep. and I was like, Oh, I didn't think about it that way. And I yep. was like, and so like, okay. And then the title online church is not the answer is supposed to be a little proc. It's supposed to yeah. stir up things because I think a lot of people think a lot of people are against it. And my yes. whole point of this book is to kind of get you riled up and then you read it and you're like, Oh wait, and and we the the guy who did, did the cover design is, is is one of your close friends, one, yep. one of my friends too, Chris yep. Beauty, and he came up with this cool idea yep. of not is this red tape, and if you actually pull the red tape off, it says online church is the answer, hmm. and and it's kind of this cool idea of like like hey, digital is this tool we get to wield, and it's not supposed to be competitive with in person. Yep. And one of the foundational things I, I kind of bring up in the book is this illustration uh, that I got from one of our friends, Matt Ingle, and, and I give him credit from Glue in the book. But I, I love this example of like, how, you know, how do you use digital in your relationship with your spouse? It's yep. not something that like my wife and I text and interact with each other constantly. Before I left, I went to Starbucks this morning yep. and um, I didn't get her a drink because I got coffee and she texted me a photo. She saw my Starbucks and she kind of was like teasing me. Like you didn't give me a drink too. Like, yeah. how dare you? Yeah. And, um, but like the deal is that digital connection doesn't prevent me from going home to her every night. Yes. 
and we integrate it. And I think churches yes. need to think of digital that way is we see it as this secondary thing or add on the top. And I think see it as something we get to wield. You know, it's like the, it's like fire. It can burn your house down and cook you a good cup of coffee. And I think, yeah. and, and I think churches are so anti it. I really wanted to give a lot of philosophical like thoughts and uh, some frameworks of thinking for the average church leader so that they can embrace it for what it is, not to replace everything you're doing, yes, but see it as something that you can really integrate. But I think the average church does, the church leader doesn't get to think about this stuff because they're just hustling, right. especially in this economy and the things like churches have less money, less resources, yep. less time. We have, we're going to have more bivocational pastors. Yep. Um, and so this is like, hey, I'm going to save you all that energy. Yes. Here's, here's like the way you should think about it. Um, and yeah. And so I've been super, I'm super excited. I, I just told my kids last night when this book goes live, we're, I'm, we're going out for a nice meal because like, I feel like I've been yes. working on it for a thousand years and, um, I'm going to be so glad when it's out, but I really pray it's a, it's an affordable way for a church leader to learn about how to integrate digital into what they're doing. And so yes. I really wrote it for the average church leader. I also wrote it as a resource for you to give to all your volunteers. Like, yes, like I I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell on my website, like a, like a very affordable group license so that you can buy nice. it, share it with 50 volunteers. Yeah. And like, I want, I want digital you, know, you and I know this is because everybody it's like politics because everybody has thoughts about politics everybody has opinions about politics yes. digital is the same thing everybody uses digital so everybody has an opinion about digital yes and so but that doesn't mean it's a good opinion and right. <laughs> and, yes. and and I think you know I've been in plenty of meetings where somebody will say something and I mean I I, I've, I think I've probably told this story on this podcast before but I was in like a a senior leader meeting at my church. This was during yep. COVID because we were still spaced. And, yep. and I remember we were talking about like moving to a digital program. Instead of handing out notes, we're going to move to digital. And yep. and one of our senior leaders, he's a theologian, really wise dude. He was like, no, no, I don't want people on their phone during church. It's going to be distracting. Yeah. They're going to like look and do stuff, which is definitely a thing. I always like yep. with my wife. Sometimes she like builds her like, target cart in church i'm like you're gonna get me in trouble so, <laughs> i'm like like you need to get a privacy filter or you're out need... on the podcast I know. No, yeah, I'm we're, like we're, we're clipping this I, yeah, uh, we're clipping clip this it. yeah but i well i tease her because like if we're sitting next to my boss or something i'm like yeah you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> <get> me <laughs> uh, not that i don't do that too but but yep. one of the things i told that leader because i again i understood where he was coming from the phone is a yeah. distracting device and we need to rein yes. it in and there's all these thoughts but one of the things i said back to him in this group setting i said that's totally true i go but you don't realize that that phone is already in their lives 24 7 what if we get to train them how to have it and use it for a productive thing what if we yes. go what if we we say hey guys we have the digital program the notes on the phone now i know this thing is distracting and you're going to want to check you know x or check your email but just for this next hour can we just practice the spiritual discipline of mm -hmm. going through God's word, hearing it and using the notes and don't do anything else on your phone, but train them yes. how to use that thing. And yeah. so I think I, and now I tend to think this way, like we need to train people how to use social media. I don't think the yep. answer is avoid all social media. I think the idea yep. is how do you do it in a productive way? How do you use your phone? And so I think it's really natural for church. I've experienced um, it's very natural for church leaders and people to be like, no, we're just against it because I think it's easier to yeah. be against it than how to integrate it in a healthy way. Because the truth is, if you do integrate it, it could be unhealthy. And yes. I think it's, it's hard in the gray. And we as church leaders tend to struggle with the gray. We tend yeah. to, we tend to have, we, we tend to like our systems and our tribes yes. of thinking. And, and really this, the point of this book is to kind of go like, Hey, I think digital can be a really good thing if you do it in a healthy way. And it's not just yep. about streaming your church service. It's yes. about everything you're doing and let's integrate it. And so I throw out ideas and structures and concepts for a church to wrestle through on that. Yeah. And I, one of the things, I mean, as I was, was, was reading the book is I, you know, I, and I read it, I mean, post, you wrote it post pandemic or rewrote it I, I, post pandemic yeah. is there was this knee jerk of, you know, you, you and I became very in demand, uh, come March, 2020, yeah. uh, of everyone is like, Oh, how do we stream? How do we take online donations? How do we like, 
we have to rely on the internet. And then people were beginning to see, oh, this can be really effective and fruitful. And then we get kind of post pandemic and they're like, okay, that, that was our yeah, band aid. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and now everyone wants to be back in person. And the reality is I think everything has changed uh, and, and, and it expedited some processes, but other reality is that online isn't the same as in person. And, and there is, and I love that how you use the word hybrid um, in your book uh, and in the title, because I, I think at the end of the day, and everyone's got to figure out for their church, what is the right kind of hybrid levels of, you know, how much are you going to use the internet and for what purposes? Um, but, but the reality is we're all using it to some extent. Um, and I think you've got to identify what, what, what that is for you. And one, one of the things I love in the book, Jay, is it's not, you know, I think a lot of church leaders and, and they're, they're can be effective, basically give our playbook for you to copy. And that's not what you do mm -hmm. in this book. Uh, it, it, you do very transparently. Here's what we've done. Here's what we've tried. Here's what we've learned. Here's some of the mistakes we've made. Um, but it is not a saddleback online copy and paste yeah. ministry model. Uh, it, it is more of a, you know, I feel like theological, you know, more than philosophical, you mm -hmm. know, approach to how, how do we, how do we approach digital um, very thoughtfully? Uh, and, and let me share some of my mistakes that I made because there was no book like this for me. You know, uh, I mean, honestly, it was yeah. basically me, you and Alan, you know, talking to each other, like, what are you learning? What, are you, what mistakes are you making? So we can kind of avoid them. There, there was not, um, this didn't exist. Um, and it's going to be a, a great resource. Jay, I, you know, I think about when I, when I went through my process, it was literally 15 years ago now, uh, that I wrote my book, yeah. social media guide for ministry, which still sells you know a couple hundred copies a year and i get like my royalty check and i'm like and i contact group and i'm like can we stop <laughs> like i talk about myspace in this book like nobody should read my book yeah. um it's it's well it's above your it head is right above now. what and oh. i and i like to show it off so people will buy it uh so this is like my teaser <laughs> don't buy it but you could go buy it on amazon.com yeah. uh but it <laughs> uh it's it's so out of date but but my i remember my you know and and i and i know you've run into this as well is i love talking to church I've, you know from day one of like when we were coming up pioneering online ministry together is church leaders would reach out to us and just say can i can i pick your brain for an hour and i would do that as much as i possibly could and then i just ran out of time to be able to like do that and and i hated saying no and so i just literally created yeah. just a pdf document of here's kind of the things I'm repeating on these phone calls over and over again that ended up making its way to group publishing. They're like, can you develop this out and write a book? Um, and that was my process. And what it did is essentially take my best thoughts around social media for ministry and put it in a resource uh, that, that churches could use. And then it's been so fun to see how that has been, uh, how that was a resource. The, the tough part about what I wrote and, and I think what I loved reading your book is my book was timely 14 years ago, mm -hmm. two years after I wrote it, it was halfway out of date. You know, uh, I feel like what you wrote really is going to be timeless, at least probably for the ne next decade, you know, th things will change. Uh, what's your hope for this book? What do you hope the readers, you know, how are they impacted and what, what do you, what, what do your, the outcomes you're looking for having created this resource? Cause I know your hope is not to become a New York times bestseller and get famous and speak at conferences. Like, uh, you love being home with your kids and serving your church. Yeah, so yeah. what's your hope for, for this book? Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I, we talked a lot as I was going into this process and I definitely thought a lot about your book as we were, um, well, as I was writing, because I know like, yeah, you talk about MySpace and all these things. And so I tried very hard to keep it a little bit more timeless. Yeah. Um, I think I was actually writing and I made a reference about Twitter or something. And I, <laughs> I made a joke about, I think it's going to called X and I have no idea what Elon's going to have it called by the time this thing gets That's published. funny. But, uh, but I tried my hardest to keep it more timeless because I think, yeah, you know, one of the reasons why I, I was I was talking to a friend about this and I I love I love working at a church figuring out some of these yep. answers because I the, we have not arrived at our yep. church like with our digital strategy it is a ever evolving there's things I'm proud of and yeah. there's things I'm embarrassed about about what we do and I love figuring it out and so one of the hard parts about writing something about digital is that it is a moving target 
what does it look yep. like? And so I tried with this book to be like, here's just some like high level things to be thinking about. And then here's how you integrate it. But like, you're always, you know, the, the line that I use in the book is, you know, digital is like this multiverse of opportunities. Mm. Like there's so many directions and pathways and that's what makes it hard. It's paralyzing to a lot of people. And so, but I love, I love figuring it out and I yes. love being wrong. I love changing. And so my hope with this book is that I hope it's a tool that unlocks another level to a lot of church churches about thinking about digital and it's used to empower people at all levels mm -hmm. at the church to um, start integrating digital at a high level. Yep. And really it's like, I want to change the minds of senior leaders of how to think about digital. Yes. And then I want it to be a resource that you could put into the hands of a volunteer mm. to go, this is what, this is how we think about digital. Cause I yes. think, I think we like, I typically those zooms or there's calls that we do with senior leaders. It's, I usually am just there to, to change the mind of the, of the yeah. leader. Like yeah. I open the pathway, like they just haven't thought about something yes. yet, you know, and I'm there to like, oh, and one of the things that, one of the reasons why I ultimately decided to actually go down this, like probably not financially worthy journey of writing a book was, um, I like, I read 30 to 40 books a year yep. and it's still one of the primary vehicles used to change pastors' minds. Yep. Like people read a book. Yes. Like, yeah, they'll watch a video. They'll do that. They'll listen to a podcast, but books get, books get passed around in a different way. Yep. And it is a thought leadership thing. Yes. And my attention was, I just wanted to put, I, I've just discovered, I think about some of this stuff in a very specific, unique yep. way. And I just want to, here's, here's how Jay thinks about this. And I want that to build a hand to a leader. And then my hope is that gets handed to the right leader that gets passed down in that org and that church gets unlocked mm. to another degree of how they think about digital. And that that's really my hope. Yeah. Is I want churches to embrace this in a way um, ultimately to reach and disciple more people yeah. and not, and not think of it as just streaming your church services. Yes. Like I, I hate when people think about my title, they just think, Oh, you're the, you're the YouTube guy at the church, <laughs> you know? Yep. And it's like, yeah, I mean, maybe that's like one of my main tasks is to get this product yes. up every week. But like, but I, I think online ministry is so much more than just that. I think it's discipling people. I think it's building journeys on apps. I think it's f digital follow up and it's creating automations. And I think it's it might be an AI like tool that you can chat with. And like, I think it's so much more. And so that's why it's like, I really like leaned into that beyond just streaming. Yes. Uh, church to hybrid disciple making and, yes. and, and how, and one of the, one of the things I talk about in the book, I have this whole chapter about outcomes. And I, I say like your job as a church isn't to fill a room. Your job is to produce spiritual fruit yep. in someone's life yep. and churches, church leaders think their job is to put that program on to fill a room. Yes. And, and my argument is filling the room is not a bad thing. Yep. That might be the best way for an objective. Yep. But if the objective is actually to, spir to create spiritual fruit, the question is, can digital aid maybe even in some places do that better? Yes. And I, I make the argument that there's a lot that your church does that maybe fill in the room is actually not the primary way to do that mm. if your objective is spiritual fruit. Yes. And so if, if the objective is to have better parents, maybe putting on another event in the midst of their busy, busy schedule yep. isn't the best option. Maybe creating a podcast could be a great, maybe you don't need to hire all this stuff and maybe you just have a podcast yeah. strategy. Again, that's a really easy illustration, but I think, and then on the flip side, healthy digital integration for your kids ministry isn't killing your kids ministry program in person, yes. but it might be a texting strategy where you text the parents of everybody who checked in kids that week and go, Hey, here's three talking points to talk to your kids this week. Yes. And again, healthy digital integration isn't online only it's it's integrated with the in-person and getting away what is your actual objective and so like my hope is just like i want i, I just want to like you, you know like we we've been in this like i just feel like churches think so amish on this and i i just really want i want this to be a tool to push out ideas to think different yes. and my hope is i i can just see it i can see a, a young you know a young girl or a young guy at a church and they have like 
they use digital, they're on Twitch and they do all this cool yes. stuff. And they're, they're, they're senior leaders. So they think so different and they're like, they're able to hand them yes. something and go like, just go through this. Yes. And that my hope is that it's a tool like that, because I know my idea is like, I've, I read books all the time and my, my, I get brought in. It's actually one of the reasons why I spent a lot of time making an audible book Yes, is I know audio is so big. And yep. so like, I didn't just write the book. I invested the time and money in, yep. to make an audio because I know so many people are doing audio. Yes. And so that was a huge learning curve for myself. I made my own audio book yep. and it was like, because I know a lot of people aren't reading. Yep. Um, but they will go through an yes, audio book. That's me. And, um, and so, yeah, it's just like, so like, I'm like, okay, I need to put the extra energy into actually doing the audio yep. because how are ideas passed around? And I, I just know still this format is still used because there is something about having a book. Like it is, you put so much time into it and you have to put your foot in this like sand and like, this is how I yes. think. And it's different than a podcast or a blog totally post different. And, or a YouTube video. Yes. It, it is like, you no, know, you spend Again, I spent like three and a half, four years on this yes. thing. And so, yes. you know, and, and I know it either will be good or bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and people will talk about and it. And I, I put out a, a video the other day on, on TikTok uh, where I, I, I said, this is why I listen to more audio books than I listen to podcasts because audio books are people's best thoughts. Podcasts mm -hmm. are people's first thoughts. And so right now That's we didn't even way. talk about like we just yeah. said, hey, you, you know, I know your book's coming out. I want to come on and have you on and talk about it. And this is a real time conversation with us recording it. Uh, but these are our first thoughts around this topic where this mm -hmm. book, you started writing it years ago, then you started editing it, then you started sending it to people, getting feedback, implementing that feedback, and you have aggregated your best thoughts around this topic. Jay, my, my, uh, my I'm going to, I'm going to name drop here for a second, uh, since you can always name drop Rick Warren, um, anytime, anytime you want, um, so one of my highlights when I released my book was that Dave Adamson, uh, Aussie Dave, uh, who's more yeah. famous than you and I will ever be, um, yeah. and, and a legend in this space. And he was, you know, one of the, I think he, he actually has on his Twitter bio seventh ever online pastor in the world or yeah. so, something like that. Um, and he was at something liquid like church, that, yeah. but then he went to North point as like a video guy. Um, but he reached out to me and said, I got a meeting coming up with Andy Stanley and I want to pitch him a social media director role uh, can I, uh, give him a copy of your book? Um, and I was like, or I don't know what That's it was. Awesome. It was like, I'm going to give him a copy of your book. Would you like to leave a note in it or anything like that? So he let me like write a note in the oh, front page cool. of the book. And, uh, and it was so cool for me if Andy Stanley was somebody I had looked up to and read all of his stuff, uh, to get yeah. to see that resource as a way for, you know, an employee to basically inspire their leader around social media, you know, 14 years ago, 13 years ago, however long that was. Um, and that's Jay, as I think about your book of, of where it's going to get shared is this is a way I think for leaders to lead up because at the end of the day, what, what I believe the biggest challenge is in, in the church space is when a lead pastor doesn't appreciate the opportunity of the internet. It doesn't mean the lead pastor needs to drive, you know, everything that's happening online, uh, but they've got to at least philosophically, you know, understand this is an opportunity for our youth ministry. This is an opportunity. This is the beauty of social media today. It's an opportunity for our senior adult ministry to have a Facebook yep. group. It's an opportunity for our volunteer ministry or, you know, like for everyone, uh, there are opportunities with digital to enhance, or uh, I, I get really excited about learning management systems and future discipleship opportunities online. And, uh, there, there's still so much I think to be done online. So um, and, uh, and so the, what I would encourage probably the majority of our listeners that aren't lead pastors is get a copy of this book, read it for yourself and then get a copy for your senior pastor, executive pastor, you know, mm. those senior leaders and decision makers in your church, because this is a way to not everybody's going to be able to fly you out, Jay, to sit down with their senior pastor and help them talk yes. through online, but they can give them your book. And it's like having a conversation with you, uh, with your learnings. And I think it's going to open up some really exciting conversations within church staffs, church, you know, and I, I think there's probably a lot of even volunteers that speak tech, but don't know how to even like, just circle this conversation up to somebody that doesn't understand, you know, what these opportunities are. They just hear, you know, the chatter and the downsides of the internet. And and it's really going to challenge, but 
I can't wait, uh, Jay, to hear the stories that come out of uh, this resource uh, th- because you're going to hear them for, for years to come. And it, it's been one of the blessings to me, you know, um, out of out of my mm. book that, you know, and, you know, in, in <laughs> your book is is having read yours is about three times the thickness of mine uh, <laughs> and like has so much more meat to it. Um, and I think about how much work I put into those hundred small pages. Uh, you poured so much into this, but I think the ROI uh, that who, mm-hmm. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I just I'm, I believe that this is going to be such a critical resource uh, in so many different ways, whether that's to distribute among volunteers or or to you know share it up among church church staff leaderships or among friends. Or I can't wait to hear about pastor groups that are like let's read this together and talk about it, or XP groups that go yeah, through I it. Had, and it's going to be fun. I had my first. Uh, I, I, I had my first, uh, like I had, I was sharing at, uh, an executive church cohort yep. that somebody was putting on. And, um, this was a couple of weeks ago and I just, it was one of those, things, you know, you and I get these every yeah. once in a while, but it was like a friend who has influence and he was like, Hey, can you just share? And it was a bunch of executive yep. pastors. And I was like, I would love to do that because anytime I can, um, be a thought yeah. leader of sharing stuff with a bunch of executive leaders. And anyways, after the deal got, uh, it wrapped. Uh, they loved it. And he texts me later. He's like, Jay, that was so good. And this guy's a, he's, he's a well-known dude. And he was like, but like, you could tell he had thought about some yes. of the stuff I had said. Um, and, but he, but I was really pumped because he said, he's like, we're going to order like 55 books when you're yep. orders. I'm going to give it to all these executive leaders, yep. like executive pastors. And I was like, so pumped yes. because I'm like, that's what, um, you know, there, we could do a whole nother pod about self-publishing yep. and the details of that and, yes. you know, the ups and downs of figuring out yep. all this stuff. But, you know, once when I when he said that to me, I've had two conversations. One was that when they, they said, we're going to order 55 books from the launch yes. and we're going to give it to all these executive pastors. I was like, oh, my goodness, how cool yes. is that? Because um, I can't have 55 conversations yep. like that. Yeah. You, you know can't. what I mean? I can't spend. Uh, you know, six right. hours going through all like I can't scale my time. And then I had one of our senior leaders. I sent them an early copy, and they he called me a couple of days ago, and he was like, "Dude, I just finished your book, A plus plus." Yes. And I was like, so like I could cry. Yes. I was like, because you just don't know. You don't like. Yeah. I know that there's going to be things in this book that will get clipped, and people will yes. be like, you know, yes, they'll have opinions about. But that's part of what publishing a book yep. is about. People argue and disagree, yep. and. I know even the title of it, I had other online pastors like really like, what are you doing, Jay? <laughs> yes. You're like the guy. And I'm like, but I told Just my friends it. whenever they said that, like I was like, I'm not trying to convince you. Yes. Yes. My target are the people who don't believe this is a thing. Yes. I'm actually trying to trick them. Yes. Um, and I go, and so I want it, I want your senior leader that doesn't really think about Jiju to go, oh yeah, this is going to be good. Yes. And then they get halfway to go like, Oh, maybe I should yes. change my mind on this. Like that's my intent. Yes. And so I'm really hoping it gets used that way. And uh I can't believe, dude, it's, it's so crazy to think like your book still a hundred copies. <laughs> it's like crazy. That like I'm still thinking about the publishing world is such a weird it's so I learned so much yes. about it. And um it's so crazy like how people buy things and yes. even how that, you know, uh so but I, I I'm super grateful. I I I say it over and I'm super grateful. Like I got to spend, I get to spend so much time thinking about this. Yeah. And this is just my way to like tell the church, like, okay, for like 15 bucks, you can yep. learn everything I've learned the last 15 years. And that's it. My hope is it's helpful. Yes. I think it is. Right. But, it, 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 um, I'm glad to hear you thought it was. Yeah, well, uh, I, we'll I got two more is. questions for you. If you got, you got time for two more yeah. questions. Yeah. So first is I, re- I read the reviews at the beginning of the book and I was a little offended. I mean, one, I was, I was, I was, uh, you, you were very generous to allow me to read it in advance, leave a review and you did include it in the book. So it's nice yeah. to have my name in print on the book, but, yeah. but I'm below, uh, RW. Uh, and so, <laughs> you know, what, what, like, could I not have just been above Rick Warren just once in my life? Uh, like you, you felt the need well, for Pastor Rick to go, have- to go first in the reviews, huh? You know, the awkward thing was, is that I had, you know, Pastor Rick and, and then I had my new pastor, yeah. Andy Wood. <laughs> Who goes first. And I, and I was like, well, it's funny. Like I said to Andy, 
I, uh, I said, I really want, I go, cause you know, he was, when I started this process yeah. of publishing it, he was just kind of getting into yep. this thing. And I said, dude, I know I kind of jokingly said like, I know you don't really know me, but like, you're going to be my pastor for the next 25 yep. years. Like, I really want you in this <laughs> yeah. book. Like, and I go, so can you, so I sent him a summary yeah. of it and I was like, I would love to have yep. you. And then as he got to know me more, yeah. he was like, you know, obviously game to yep. write a review but i was like laughing because i was like i felt like i was like having to pick mom or dad yes. <laughs> to have like do i have to put andy ahead of yep. Rick? you know not that he would care but yep. i was like yeah so yeah you are lower I, than i am lower Rick i am lower but i but i'm still on you know the same list as those two Dude, but, uh, but you got an I incredible list there like you know working with people like this like you know you, you've worked with some big names and um I I emailed. I was actually just talking to a friend on staff who's older than me, and he told me he's like, "Yeah, I sent my book to Rick, and Rick never responded." <laughs> and he was kind of like, uh, "Like yeah. not like not really yeah. annoyed." He's like, "Oh, he did it for you." But I emailed Rick, and I was very like, "Dude, like you're you don't need to do this, but I would love to get you to endorse yes. a book, my book." But don't feel. And he uh. He was so beyond great. I mean, Rick is always great yes. like that, but he's so busy yes. and so many things going on. He actually, I reference this in the first chapter. Or I think it's actually the, yeah, chapter one. I told a little bit of the history of digital yeah. of Saddleback Church and he added three paragraphs. Hmm. He read my first chapter and he said, Jay, you need to add this because no one's going to tell this. And you're the, per this is the perfect book to tell Bro. the story of Saddleback. Yes. And I was like, why in the world is Rick giving you yes. time like this? Yes. <laughs> like, yes. And he was, he, he was beyond gracious. Yes. And um, he's, he, he always gives back to the church like yes. that. But I was like, thank you. Thank you. He, he doesn't always, cause he can't you. always, but, but I think he it speaks to no, your relationship. Uh, and what an honor that, that is. It was such an yeah. honor. I, 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 there's, there's like multiple points I could like, I'm like, what in the world, God, are you doing yes. right now? Like, why is he responding to my email? Yes. But, um, yes. But my, and, and I won't tell the, tell the long story here, but I met Rick Warren for the first time with you in at Life Church, and I didn't know oh, yeah. what it was like uh, to to meet Pastor Rick. And when he walked up, I was the closest to him. When I went out to put my hand out to shake his hand, he went in for the full bear hug, which he does. I yeah. know now. Uh, and I just poked him in the belly, uh, you know, uh, and it was it was an awkward uh, first moment. Luckily, he has no idea, you know, remembering who I, I am. I forgot and, about that trip. I forgot. I remember because I was standing next to, uh, is it Bobby? Yeah, Bobby uh, Greenwald Bobby, was there uh, with him. Yeah. yeah. Greenwald. And he was like, do you know Rick's? in town yeah. and i was like no it was like eight o'clock at night at, in the you know i don't <laughs> well, i was like it's not my like i barely talked yeah. to rick but he was like yeah he's in town and then he showed up and i was like yes you know i was like this is crazy yep. i'm like i hope i don't get in trouble like, <laughs> he doesn't know i'm hey, just traveling you? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, yeah anyway, it's so. it you know yeah i i've loved your journey jay i so i want to and this isn't a question this is actually i would this is a call to action to our listeners uh jay i appreciate your generosity through the years to me to uh to church leaders everywhere but it honestly through this podcast you you've invested you know part of those hundred thousand hours into this podcast as you've learned out loud uh here to this audience and i, I just want to demand <laughs> you know i don't know if i can do that but greatly request <laughs> not that everyone just that everyone on here goes and buys his book today uh go and buy you know go and buy two copies go you know, go, go mm. support this work in buying copies. But the other thing that everyone on this podcast should do uh, is when you buy those copies, go and leave a, a rating and review on Amazon mm. uh, that Jay has given so much to us. Um, I think it's the minimum that we can do to support this effort uh, that Jay's giving, but I can guarantee you that even that, you know, uh, investment uh, you're going to get tenfold back from reading this book. Um, and so I just go and do that. Uh, now, like just stop the podcast, get on Amazon. Uh, and I always say, go to Amazon. Jay, is there somebody somewhere else you want people to go to, to get the book? No, there you can get it on Amazon, Apple, uh, Barnes and Noble. Amazon's the only place that's selling the print. Okay. And so, but if you go to jcranda.com, I have a page on there where you can get it. So I have a audio, a print, yep. you can buy the PDF and audio and MP3 is on my website as well. Okay. And so if you go to jcranda.com, there's a page for my book where all the links are there, yep. but, 
um, yeah. So, but yeah, get that. Thank you. That's very kind yeah. of you. And I would love any support. And so don't, so the audience here I'm, I'm going to override you though. We'll, we'll put a link in the show notes to jcrando.com, but go to Amazon because you can't leave a review unless there's proof that you purchased yeah. it and wrote yeah. it. And we, we want to support idea. the movement of this book, getting to more leaders. And this conversation gets furthered through this effort. Jay, we're going to have you back on as much as you'll be willing to come on. I know you're, you're Wait. grateful to be off of this podcast, but we're going to have you back on uh, <laughs> as much as, you, as you'll come back on because there's a lot of other things that we didn't get to talk about, uh, but it's too timely. The book is out now. You need to go get it. Uh, we'll have links, socialmedia.church, but just search Jay Cranda on Amazon. Get, get the book. Go to jaycranda.com. Uh, get yep. the book. And uh, Jay, love you. Excited for you. And we can't wait for all that's ahead. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll talk to you again on the next episode.